Everybody loves perfectly creamy macaroni and cheese. But even in quarantine, you don't have to rely on the blue box if you want some of this childhood classic. There's four things we need to cover in this video for your stovetop mac and cheese success. Number one, the method with evaporated milk. Number two, how the method changes if you want to use regular milk. Number three, how to add meats and vegetables to make new mac and cheese creations. And number four, which is probably the most important, what is the best method for reheating leftover mac and cheese to turn it up from dried up to creamy goodness again? First up is the three ingredient evaporated milk method, which is renowned among fans of the Food Lab and Serious Eats. If you're wondering what the hell this canned milk is, Wikipedia tells me that evaporated milk is a shelf stable canned cow's milk product where about 60% of the water has been removed from fresh milk. Basically, the taste is a very milk forward milk, would not recommend drinking it by the glass. It's also important to point out that this is very different from condensed milk, which is sweetened with added sugar, so make sure you pick up the right can of canned milk, or else you may end up with some weird dessert mac and cheese abomination. For your macaroni choice, any brand will do, but I'm going to shout out Rouse Homemade. It is by far the best macaroni I've used. The slowly extruded macaroni has a rough texture compared to cheaper and faster produced macaroni, leading to a better sticking sauce. The texture itself has bite, but it's still kind of chewy, and I don't really know how to explain it to be honest. If you know, you know. Lastly is our cheese. Feel free to use any cheeses you may have, but make sure primarily it's a good melting cheese. Varieties could include American, Young Cheddar, Gouda, Gruyere, Mozzarella, Oaxaca, Young Swift, Young Provolone, or the list goes on and on. Also, I'm not being ageist against aged cheeses. They have less moisture, so the fat and water break down easier, which is gonna give us a greasy sauce instead of a smooth one. If you wanna use aged cheeses, add them in small quantities right at the end before serving with the bulk majority of a good melting cheese. For my purposes, I like using equal parts of a smoked Gruyere and a mild cheddar. Let's make some mac. At the stove, add eight ounces of macaroni to a medium frying pan or saucepan. I actually prefer a shallow and wide pan because the water boils a little bit faster due to more surface area. To the cast iron, add water to just barely cover the macaroni. This is important because we are going to create a high starch concentration for our sauce. Also, add about five grams or a teaspoon of salt. We don't want much because we aren't draining the pasta water and all the salt will be absorbed. Bring the pasta to a boil while stirring constantly. The stirring is key since we don't have much water, the pasta will stick if it's not stirred. So don't walk away for more than a minute or so. After about seven minutes when the pasta has absorbed almost all the water and is about al dente, turn the heat to low. You're gonna pour in six ounces of the evaporated milk, add in eight ounces of cheese. I use four ounces of cheddar and four ounces of smoked Gruyere. Stir the macaroni for about one to two minutes until the cheese melts and the sauce has formed. Feel free to add more cheese or thin out with a little bit milk for your desired mac and cheese consistency. Now it's time to taste and add salt. It probably doesn't need much, if any. Also, how many spoonfuls does tasting your food just become eating your food? Because I think five is a couple too many. Serve it in a bowl and enjoy the fruits of your labor. About 15 minutes of work, one pot, and lots of cheese. Okay, so now that the secret's out on evaporated milk and there's been a grocery run on it, can you do this stovetop method with regular milk? You can, but the method is going to change as we cook the pasta right in the milk instead of water. Basically, we need to evaporate our own milk. Let me show you how. Just like before, add eight ounces of macaroni to a medium frying pan or saucepan. Instead of water though, add 20 ounces of milk right to the pan. Turn on the heat and start stirring. With this method, you have to be diligent with stirring to avoid scorching the milk and having the pasta stick. After about 15 minutes though, the milk will have absorbed and the pasta should be al dente. Once it kind of looks like this, go ahead and add in the cheese. For this one, I did four ounces of cheddar and two ounces of Gruyere and also two ounces of an aged Beamster. Stir the macaroni for about one to two minutes until the cheese melts and the sauce has formed. Feel free to add in more cheese or thin out with more milk for your desired mac and cheese consistency. As always, taste test and add salt as needed. Now in my test between the two, I slightly prefer the evaporated milk method. Number one, because the cheese sauce texture is a little bit smoother, and number two, the pasta cooks faster at a higher heat because you don't have to worry about scorching the milk. But whichever method you choose, great mac and cheese is not far away. Okay, okay, you may be saying, you can make it with evaporated milk and regular milk, but Ethan, I just can't eat plain mac and cheese as a meal. 
I would say you're wrong, but I'll provide you with a solution because you have just unlocked the blueprint for turning any mac and cheese into a full blown meal with whatever your heart desires. How about we spice things up with the roast of poblano and chicken mac and cheese? Here are the ingredients I picked up for our spicy mac. First up, I roasted a poblano and a habanero in the oven and removed the outer skin. You can skip the habanero if you want less heat. Next, I have a bag of shredded Mexican cheese. Now, pre-shredded cheese is not optimal for the sauce as it normally contains anti-caking agents, but it still turns out great, so don't be afraid to use shredded cheese if it's all you have in the fridge. For the meat, I have some sliced up chicken thighs that were cooked in salt and pepper, and then for our spices, I have cumin, chili powder, and smoked paprika. Add the stove, it's business as usual. Add eight ounces of macaroni to a saucepan and add water to just barely cover it with five grams or about a teaspoon of salt. That's going to give us that high starch concentration. Bring the pasta to a boil while stirring constantly. After about seven minutes, when the pasta has absorbed almost all the water and is about al dente, turn the heat to low. Pour in six ounces of evaporated milk, add the bag of Mexican cheese, the cooked chicken, the habanero, and the poblano. You're gonna add in two grams of smoked paprika, two grams of chili powder, and two grams of cumin. Stir the macaroni for about one to two minutes until the cheese is melted and the sauce has formed. Again, feel free to add more cheese or thin out with more milk for your desired mac and cheese consistency. This one I probably would have liked to have a little bit more cheese in it, but after three batches of mac, I'm all tapped out. Serve it up and there you have a complete bowl of proteins, fats, and carbs. With this method, you can literally throw any leftover anything. So if you all make some mac and cheese creations, send them to me on Instagram because I would love to see. Now we move to our last topic of the day, which is what is the best way to reheat leftover mac and cheese? Maybe you've gone crazy in your kitchen and you just barely made too much mac and cheese to eat in a single day. Keyword being barely. As mac and cheese cools in the fridge, it soaks up all the sauce, so when you go to open your leftover container, it's no longer creamy. But instead of just popping it in the microwave and dealing with non-creamy mac and cheese, let's get that creaminess back. What I like to do is add a tablespoon of milk per cup of leftover mac and cheese. Once out of the microwave, just keep stirring this up until that creaminess is perfectly like it was yesterday. The macaroni noodle itself will be a little bit overcooked compared to yesterday, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. In summary, there are a ton of different ways to make mac and cheese. You can make it with a wuru that turns into a mornay, you can do the whole like egg and milk sauce thing, or you can make it right out of the box if you want to. But the fastest method, and I think one of the best, is the three ingredient stovetop mac and cheese. You can grab your pantry ingredients, the evaporated milk and the macaroni, and get a nice block of cheddar cheese, which still tasty, the ultimate shelf life guide tells me will last six months in the fridge if it's unopened. With all those components, you can make mac and cheese at a moment's notice. So with all that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and found it valuable. If you did, definitely drop me a like and subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.